Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four: the multi line trace by channel node. I have a quick little example. Let's run through it. We can see the multi line trace by channel node to my left. You'll notice as I walk through this, I'm getting a few green spheres, spheres, green cubes on my player, as well as technically the collision volume I have around my player. I'm also getting one on this cube here. I'm getting one on the wall behind it. And if we went back here and we looked at the second one, you'll notice there is another cube on the wall behind that. Now, we are using the multi line trace by channel in order to achieve that. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's pull up my example sphere here and edit the blueprint. And we are looking at the multi line trace by channel node. Now let me go ahead and show you how to create one. You can just type in multi line and you'll find the multi line trace by channel node. And this is how it comes in by default. We've already covered the line trace by channel, so I'm not going to cover everything in too much detail. Go ahead and refer to that if you want anything specific. We're just going to cover the differences and how you'd use it. If you look at them, they are fairly similar. The biggest difference being the multi line trace by channel node it is technically not going to stop if it overlaps with something that it's set to hit. And it's going to return back an array of hit results rather than a single result. Now let's show that in action. Here's our multi line trace. I'm basically starting at my sphere point here and then just projecting forward and seeing everything we hit. Now, by default, your trace channel is going to be visibility. And if you do that, it's pretty much going to react like your normal hit. If you notice, I have a starting point, we have a hitting point in red, and then it goes green because we've successfully hit. If we were to go to here, and I don't know why I have this set, and just pull out, we'll type in length, we'll hook this up to a print node here, let me move this out of the way, make it easier, and we'll go ahead and just fire the length into the print node. What we're going to see here is one, we are hitting one item, and our out hits is returning only one. If you're trying to use the multi line trace by channel for hitting purposes, you're going to end up having an issue. It's meant more for overlapping. If it hits, it's going to stop. Now, I know it says technically on the description, if we read it in here somewhere, which is not cooperating, of course. There we go. Does a collision trace along the given line and returns all hits encountered, up to and including the first blocking hit. Now, when it says return all hits encountered up to and including the first blocking hit, it's not referring to a blocking hit for the first hits. It's referring to an overlap hit. And I'll show you that right here. It says the trace finds the objects that respond to the given trace channel. So that's important. What I've done is in my project settings, under collision, I've created a new trace channel and I've called it custom channel. I've simply set the default to be overlap. What that's going to do is anything in here that has a default preset. Let's say, for example, my wall. My wall is going to be a block all. It's going to be a world static. And down here under the trace type, it's going to block visibility, block the camera, but it's only going to overlap my custom channel. And that's important. When we go back in here, to our multi line trace, and we change the trace channel to custom channel and run it, we get a completely different result. We get three as our return value. And actually, if I walk in front of it, we notice it's going to change into five. Now, why are we getting three? We're firing off our trace. Remember, everything in my scene is going to respond as a overlap event for my collision channel, the custom one I created. It's going to hit this blueprint here, this cube, and that green cube is indicating an overlap event, and boom, it fires off an overlap event. It exits, it hits the blocking wall, boom, it fires off another overlap event. It continues through, 
it hits the back smaller wall, boom, it fires off another overlap event. So that's why we have three returns. If I walk in front of this, we get two of them because it's hitting the collision sphere, my capsule around my player, and then it's going through that and hitting the player's mesh itself. So that's why we have five different hits, or three. So that's something to keep in mind. The multi-line trace is used to continually fire through and return back the results of everything it hit without stopping unless it hits a blocking. So it's going to return back multiple values rather than the line trace which just simply returns back the first value. This is useful if you wanted to use maybe uh, bullet penetration. You want to fire through multiple things and of course maybe as your bullet hits every object it slowly degrades in terms of speed or impact, the impact basically. Or you want to fire through something and you want to see everything it goes through but you don't you want everything. Basically that's what the multi-line trace is for. You want to fire off a trace and you want everything that it goes through. It's more useful when you are using it with like the sphere or box which are covered separately, but the multi-line trace is really useful for bullets and penetration. That is going to go ahead and wrap up our video. Oops, actually, you know what? It's not going to wrap up our video. Sorry about that. The other options here are covered in the normal ones. Trace complex is if it's a complex or simple collision. Actors to ignore is an array of actors we ignore when we do the line trace. Debug type is what we're using now just to see our line. If we remove it, of course, we're not going to see it anymore. And then ignore self basically is designed to either ignore any collision that's assigned to the item. So in our case, if we didn't have ignore self on, it's going to collide with the sphere when we fire off and it's going to treat itself as a collider for the line trace. One thing to keep in mind here, like I mentioned, the return, well, I didn't mention, but one thing to keep in mind that I sort of alluded to was if we're using a blocking value. For example, here, let me turn my debug back on. One frame. A blocking value, my cube, for example, is going to block it completely. And the return value here is only active if it's a blocking value. That is important to note. If we put an if branch here and plug it in, and we go ahead and hit play, it's going to print out the value only if it's blocking. If I turn this to my custom channel and hit play, you'll notice even though I have five results, the green spheres, the green squares, we're not getting anything printed out. An overlap from a trace channel, not a hit, an overlap does not fire off our return value because our return value is technically if it hit or not. So you need to keep that in mind. If you're, fire, you're used to firing up to reduce the amount of things you do on a trace, your return value itself cannot be used as a branch like this. You're basically going to have to break your hits every time, maybe check the length and see if the length is greater and then go from there. That is going to wrap up our video on multi-line trace by channel.